What's up Cumberland Valley? Craig here with CumberlandValleyTV.com. Today I am very pleased to be joined by my good friend Cindy Strop from Revelation Photography. Cindy, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me here. All right. Well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? How long have you uh, been a professional photographer? Um, I have been a professional photographer for about 30 years. Um, I started out uh, photographing weddings and portraits as I was raising my own kids and my family, and I have, I'm still doing it. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, one of the questions a lot of people uh, have asked me is, do you need to buy a professional camera or is an iPhone or a Android good enough? Well, with the changes in technology, the phone um, cameras are, of course, getting better and better. Um, it depends how serious you are with photography. Um, the advantage of having um, you, uh, like a, a better D camera <laughs> um, is you have more control over your images. Um, you can you can adjust the settings to get the exact results that you want um, a lot better um, if you're interested in either creating artwork or getting a little bit more serious with your photography. Yeah, I know you can control the, the exposure and the, uh, the f-stop and, and all and get different depths of field and that kind of thing with mm -hmm. it. Um, once you've taken your images, what do you do to save them? Well, this is something that's really important. I've had friends and clients bring their cell phones to me or say, we never backed up our images or actually lose images that were important to them because they were not backed up. Um, what I do, obviously with clients, those images are, it's essential that I have multiple forms of backup. Um, as soon as I am done with an event, I mean, if I'm done with a wedding at midnight, that night those images are backed up. I do not let that's the first thing that I do. Um, I do use external hard drives um, as well as online cloud storage as well. So there are multiple forms of backup for my images. And then you, you print, obviously you being a professional, you do a lot of printing. Yes. And um, one thing that's just very important, um, we're in a generation that takes lots of photos, actually more photos than any previous generations. But this is a generation with no prints. Um, and I know a lot of it is just the with the new technology and everything is online and digital. Um, for future generations, you want to have those family photos preserved and you want to print what you want to preserve for generations. Um, printed photographs last over a hundred years. Um, with digital media, everything changes so rapidly that, for example, if you have photos on a CD, they're going to be obsolete soon. and the longevity of those um, media, you know, they have, there's, there's CDs that won't open images after 10 or 20 years, or if you store things near electric, electronic fields, it can erase data. Um, so the safest way to preserve those memories is to print them. When, uh, as far as the printing goes, do you recommend sending them off to like a, a professional printer or a lab or is printing them with your home laser jet printer okay? There is such a variety as far as the quality of printing. Um, obviously, I, I'm using a professional photo lab that just deals with professional photographers. So they're using the highest quality archival materials. And those are the images that are going to, you know, be the best quality and going to last, you know, last a client's lifetime and longer. Um, you know, there's a lot of advertised, you know, online sites for, you know, cheap printing, whether it's, you know, like the department stores or, um, you know, the online canvases. There's some of that stuff is just really low quality um, and that's how they offer a low price. So um, honestly, it depends on your purpose. If it's something that you're going to hang on the wall and take down in a year and replace, it may not be worth the investment. Um, if you want something that you're going to hand down the future generations, then I would, you know, go with quality printing as much as possible. Okay. Um, we happen to be recording this podcast right before the holidays. And so there's going to be a lot of pictures taken at, at family gatherings. Okay. 
Do you have some some tips, some do's and don'ts maybe that you could share with us? Sure. Um, there's so many, but um, kind of some basic ones is um, when you're taking, let's say, a family group picture, um, watch for things like what's in the background, the location of where you're taking the photo, um, the lighting. Um, if you're indoors, um, you know, even if you're using like an automatic white balance indoors, your lighting is um, more tungsten, so it's gonna give everything an orange cast, um, unless you use flash. Um, you know, even outdoors, look for a nice open shade. You don't wanna have people like directly in the sun so they're squinting or backlit so that they're in shadow and you can't see their face. I mean, there's um, just practical things like that. And then also something that I even do in my portraiture is, Get family interacting, not just everyone looking at the camera. Capture the moments, the emotions of the things that are going on in the holiday season. Um, you know, families having fun together is, they're the best memories. Yeah, be proud of your Instagram posts, right? Exactly. Not everything has to has to be a selfie. Do you use, do you recommend the use of a flash uh, when you're taking your pictures? Well, it really depends on the, on the situation. Um, I mean, as a portrait photographer, I'm looking for good light on the faces. Um, honestly, I mean, there's a lot of great natural light shooters um, that, that you know, swear by that's all they, they shoot. And there's some great, beautiful natural light out there. However, unless you're in a perfect lighting situation, it's usually um, not going to be without some shadows on faces and it's particularly under your eyes. And you want that sparkle in the eye with some light in the eyes. So, I mean, just in my in my business, I always use some flash, um, whether it's directional brought in from the side so it would resemble natural light, um, you know, or directly on the camera. Um, if that's controlled lighting, that's, you know, that's an option as well. But, um, I mean, yeah, I, I would recommend using flash. That's my style, um, just to get the, the best possible lighting on people's faces. And I suppose if you're at a party or something, you don't have a flash, you can actually move lamps around a little, you know, to your other lighting sources, uh, just to throw a little bit of light on the person's face. If you, if that's your only option mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and window light is always a great option if you use the light that's coming in you know from the outdoors um you know that's the best lighting is our natural outdoor lighting on the faces um too so there's there's plenty of options to um you know to make your photos better great do you uh do you use a tripod much not as much as i should just because i tend to work quickly um and the tripod basically slows me down. So yeah. I know a lot of studio photographers still, there's advantages to using tripods with, you know, to make your shot steadier. I just use a fast enough shutter speed that I'm not going to have motion in my photos and, um, and I can still, I'm a wedding photographer. Um, so we got to move quickly yeah. during weddings. So I don't let anything slow me down at a wedding. Right. And that take, that does take a while to set up the tripod, make sure it's level, all that kind of thing. Uh, what shutter speed, what's the slowest shutter speed that you feel is safe to handhold a shot at? Now that actually depends on the lens. Um, because if you have more of a zoom lens, it actually, you have to actually use a fast shutter speed. A good rule for, for a more advanced photographer that's familiar with their camera is that, let's, for example, if you have a 200 millimeter lens, you have to be um, a shutter speed of like, 200 or faster so it's basically the length of your lens you have to be that that speed or faster to not show motion i mean i can you know with a a wider lens i can hand hold down to about a 30th of a second i don't usually do that um but i can if yeah, i need to yeah. or and be as wide as you can right so yeah um if people want to learn more about photography uh, you know, more than just the basics, uh, how can they learn more? There's actually a lot of great resources for uh, education and photography. Uh, there are, I mean, there are local camera clubs. There is a lot of online, a wealth of online resources, um, 
you know, out there um, for education. I'm actually currently the president of Professional Photographers Association of Pennsylvania. And um, in addition to a resource for professional photographers, um, our monthly programs are also open to um, photography students, um, serious photography um, enthusiasts that just want to come and join us and learn. Um, I also have taught classes and kind of one-on-one um, sessions with people that want to learn more about photography as well. Yeah, I know there's some uh, good videos on, on YouTube too that can help you with the basic, but there's nothing like personalized instruction where you can ask an, you know, a question as it comes to you instead of trying to figure it out. Exactly. Uh, now, if someone's throwing a, an event and they want to be able to enjoy the event and not worry about taking a bunch of pictures, obviously they can hire you to do that. Yes. And then you're guaranteed some really good images and the pressure's off you, the host, as far as getting, getting the pictures. Uh, how can people reach you? What's the best way? Oh, uh, the best way um, is still still the phone. I want to talk to you <laughs> and yeah. find out about your event, find out about, um, you know, what you like so we can, you know, have the experience be exactly what you're looking for. Um, also, um, email. I mean, I have people that like reach out to their social media and that type of thing as well. I mean, everybody has different ways to communicate, but um, yeah, any of those are good. And um, yeah, just if it's an important family event, to hire a professional is something you should consider. Um, I know a lot of people like to do everything themselves, but you know, if it's if it's something like a wedding, I said being a wedding photographer for thirty years, um, you got a one one shot to do this, and you want to capture everything that happens that day, and and you know, other other things on your budget you can work with, you know, and do some things yourself, but your photos are what you're going to have for the rest of your life. So um, just keep that in mind, um, you know, that yeah. that's something you're going on. And you've been doing it long enough that you can anticipate the problems that arise when yes. you're shooting an event like that. Uh, and do you have a, you have a website as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and people can check out your work on that, yep. I assume. It's and, Revelation Photography, and it, the website is actually revelationphotostudio.com. And, uh, yep, you can can check out some of my work on there. Great. Well, I'll put all your contact information, including your email, phone number, and website uh, up on the screen so people can, uh, can contact great. you um, easily. Hey, thank you so much for joining us and sharing some tips for the upcoming holidays. And uh, we'll have you back again soon to talk about other um, aspects of photography. Okay. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.